Ten miles from the city of Pittsburgh, a town called Braddock lay on the bank of the Monongahela River. Its people and football team, much like the steel forts in the furnaces of the valley, may bend, but they don't break. When a 28-year-old Chuck Clausen took over the Braddock Tigers, the team in town experienced an unforgettable six years of greatness. Tiger Faithful filled the bleachers with 6,000 fans every Friday night. In a town of just over 10,000, if you weren't in the stands, you were waiting outside on the rooftops watching the game. When we came out of the locker room to come to the game, the streets would be full of people all the way up from Braddock High School up to the stadium and the stadium was packed. Confident fans often wagered their entire paychecks or even their cars. But it was never much of a gamble when betting on the Tigers. No, the 59 team, the 59 was not, team is the one that they put they in. They got honor, but they weren't yeah. good as the 58 team. The 50 of the, the 61 team. You guys got the credit for being the best. Yeah, we they were. weren't the best. We were the best. We yeah. would have beat them up and down the field. While there may be some question or debate about which team or year was the best of the best, no one could deny who ruled high school football in the state of Pennsylvania. But in 1959, the team and the town were about to face a whole new challenge. These were the steel plants of America as they banked their fires in anticipation of the nationwide strike that many fear will be one of the industry's worst. The prolonged process of actually shutting down the mills began when it became apparent that the deadlock in negotiations could not be resolved. The longest and costliest strike in the history of the steel industry hit the United States economy in 1959. 500,000 steel workers saw their last paychecks for at least five months. See that blue sky? If we would have seen that blue sky in 1959, we would have not eaten, because when that sky, when it was filled with graphite and that graphite fell on your car and your clothes and everything like that, and the skies lit orange with the flame from the blast furnaces, there weren't too many complaints. That meant that life was good in our town and that meant we could eat and get food and go to school. And in 1959, the day of the strike, everything stopped. What did it do for the town? You know what? It, it, uh... It, it, it gave pretty much every steel worker, every Westinghouse worker in this area, a purpose on Friday night. And it, and it gave them something to talk about. They talked about the game all week. You know, if it was gonna be a Braddock, North Braddock, they were wars. They were just simply wars. In 1959, the city of Braddock was devastated by the worst labor strike in the United States history. In that same year, Braddock approached the longest winning streak ever in high school football. They did so in the face of extreme adversity and even starvation. Through it all, they kept on winning, keeping their small town alive and proud. If, if you left this town and somebody asked you where you came from and you said, Braddock, oh, that's the team, that's the team that wins all the time. That's the team that has, wins championships all the time. Sports Illustrated did the, the thing and they rode in here about playing on a cinder field. They weren't literally alive. <laughs> I mean, we, we played on a cinder field. You know, you got roughed up pretty good, but 
It was the only place we had to practice, so we practiced. Makes it yeah. tough. I still got some of them things on my knees. <laughs> Makes it tough. Their success was forged by all state players such as Mark Rutowski, Joe Reeves, and Joe Morenzi. But the 59 team consisted of a new band of brothers. Ray Henderson, John Jacobs, and Ben Powell. I didn't want to be the, on the losing team at Braddock and stop the streak. That was the big thing in the back of my mind, plus, you know, the history that, that they had built up over the six years. During the North Braddock game, the winning touchdown came from an unlikely source. Raymond Butch Henderson was notorious for dropping football. All I know is that we were in the last 38 seconds of the game, and, and uh, that Jake very rarely wanted to throw to me. Because, they, <laughs> because, yeah. because, because he uh, dropped a lot of passes. Well, I, I had I had a lot of touchdowns too. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, 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 I'm yeah. laugh. I had a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, that's true. I had a lot of touchdowns. Drops or not, Butch was ready for the most important catch of his life. The pass that Jake threw me was in the middle of the end zone, and all I all I did, I seen it coming. I just jumped up and I grabbed it. That was it. And the ball was just so. It was right where right it should have been. Money. Right on the money. Thank you. I appreciate that. The Tigers capped the season with 53 consecutive wins, heading into their rivalry game against North Braddock, a record that would serve as a source of pride every day for the small town. It was kind of unique being in such a, a, a pretty small town where you'd maybe be walking down the street and uh, somebody would walk up and you'd say, hey, you really played a hell of a good game the other night. And you had no idea who they were at that time, but uh, they knew you. The, the main focus of the team was really based around the coaches that we had. We had some good coaches. The team was led by head coach Chuck Clausing and hard-nosed defensive coordinator, John Zucker. Clausing was only 33, entering the 59 season, and leaned heavily on his Marine Corps background for discipline and guidance for the team. The young coach wore a Notre Dame cap to every game, not because he was a fan of the Golden Domers, but to him, the ND stood for no defeat. The pressure got greater, you know, uh, as the years went on. Like, uh, after my first year, uh, we won eight games in a row. Second year, 16 in a row. And it came up to uh, the last year, we had 53 games in a row, and to beat North Braddock. Clausen was also creative and innovative when it came to keeping the team motivated. We all ate together, either at home and, and away games. And then the other thing that he did was unbelievable was we'd go to a movie theater to kind of get our mind away or, you know, not concentrate or think about the game. The concept of team movies has now been adopted by almost every NFL team. 50 years later. Every game, you know, is the last game where you play like a cliche, one game at a time, but uh, there was just the atmosphere that was created by uh, Coach Klausing that just motivated and, and inspired people to do the best they can. Even though Klausing left after the 59 season, it's hard to believe that anything ever compared to Braddock on Friday nights. <laughs>